called Buster Week, 1983-84. The moment, the second I came up with the idea and the concept of Buster Week. Buster Week. So follow me, you guys. Put up a chair, man, and listen, man. This is not about, again, this is not about bragging, boasting. This goes out to my bloods, my cousins. This is about education, you feel me, about teaching, and about allowing you youngsters to know, man, y'all be blessed that y'all don't have to go through the shit we had to go through. Blessed that you're not in the type of trenches that we used to be in, bro, when this shit first hit, man, 60 years ago, man. Fucking with this genocide and this bullshit ass shit we call gang gang. But what is Buster Week, Big Nino? Well, Buster Week was the concept I came up with because we were in 3,500 at this time. We were in 3,500. We had 2,200, which is 22, 2,300, and 35, 32. The numbers is odd and even. The Bloods was on one side. The Crips was on the other side. The Mexicans and the white boys was in the middle. So that's how they had it segregated and separated. They had the Mexicans, which would be the Serenos and the white boys, the ABs and whatever others. They, you know, they had them in the middle of the, of the module. The N, which would be, I want to say, Baker Dibber, Charlie Abel for us. And then on the other side, same thing, vice versa on 3200. We had 3500. So at this time, we had 3500 and 2200. We started with the Peel module and we had got deep. Once we got up to almost like a hundred some soldiers, they split us up, OSS split us up and gave us two modules. You know what I'm saying? And again, um, when we were on the module 3,500, we talked about individuals like myself, Big Renzi, uh, Loaf, Loaf came through. Matter of fact, Loaf had just caught his case, came back from YA, Loaf came in. We talked about Bandit, uh, my homie Big Wheel, rest in peace, all my crimes. They all young niggas at the time, too, just like me. Uh, we talking about shit, man. Uh, 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 Snoop Dogg, big homie Snoop. Uh, shit, man. Uh, Philip Thornton, his brother. His big brother, Philip Thornton. Uh, Inglewood Families, A. Bay. Uh, uh, Papa T. Uh, big Diamond. Lil Diamond. Uh, shit, man. Uh, we talking about, man, hitters, man. Swines, we talking about uh, Sinister. Uh, uh, uh. Weaver we Wobblehead just came down from Quentin. Shit, we got a uh, big Mike stretch. You know what I'm saying, me? And uh, the list goes on, man. I, I, I can name them, man, all, man. But the list goes on. I'm just naming a few, man. Brims, Big Bruno, Big Black Bruno, Pablo Steve, Big Fritz from Pablo's. You feel me? The Bottoms, the Villains. You know what I mean? Uh, big Rooster. You know what I mean? I mean, man, we was in that motherfucker thick and young niggas, though. You feel what I'm talking about? So I came up with this concept, bro, because as far as I call the bunny hunters, we was getting deep. We was getting hella deep in the county jail. And so they had us in the one-man cells at this time. It was one man, two, one man and two men cells. And so we were getting hella deep as far as our body count. So they had to split us up. So that's why they had half of us down on 2,000 floor. And the other half, we was all, most of our crimes, we was on 3,000. Some of our crimes was on 2,000 floor. They split, split us up. However, me and Hook was together the whole duration. Feel me? Me and Hook rolled it out the whole time. Me and Hook was together from the county all the way to high power, all the way to the penitentiary till we caught the chains, man, to Tracy, getting straight off the bus in Tracy and busting niggas real you know, man with them things, with them knives, man, and had to get rolled right up out of Tracy because they wasn't having them. Crip niggas wasn't letting us on the yard, so we had to come off an R&R &R and get down with niggas and put work in it straight up. You know what I'm saying? E Hook, We Low, Eminem. So they split us up, sent Hook to Trick Quentin, sent me to Folsom. That's how I ended up in Folsom. I originally was supposed to go to Quentin. I was supposed to go to San Quentin. But since we was crimes, they split us up. Sent We We and them to Quentin. You feel me? However, in the county jail, being that we were so getting so so vastly strong and the numbers was getting big, and I'm talking about not just us, the Power Rules, the Brims, different lanes. I'm talking about uh, L.A. Denver Lanes, Pasadena Denver Lanes, uh, four five sixes. You know what I mean? Uh, Big Wheel from BNG. You know what I'm talking about? Alien Nest from BNG. I mean, we had bruises in this bitch, man. You feel what I'm talking about? Big Ace from Paru, Little Ace, Big Nate Dog, Big Hurt, Booty Bandit Ass, Big Hurt. You know what I'm talking about? My homie Wano. Man, we was thinking this some bitch deep, bro. So I came up with the concept Buster Week. So I told my I told my road dog hook. I said, look, look, man, 
Nigga, we need gonna we gonna start having Buster Week with the Bonnie Hunter car, homie, because it's a lot of us and a lot of these niggas coming in from the hood, from the streets. It's just from the hood, but they ain't never putting no work in, bro. They ain't really, you know what I mean, put that work in. So we gotta know that the niggas that's coming in, that we all solid and we all rocking together as one when it comes to this bunny on the car, man. Let me wave at a few of my people, man. I had to go back and read your comments, man, unless you want to leave them. On my timeline, TV land. So, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> anywho. So, I, I, I run it down the hook. You know what I mean? I'm tell hook and shit. So, we talked about it. Talked to a couple of my homies and shit. And then, um, I ran it down to Big Snoop. I told the homie, big homie, big Snoop. So, when the next falling day room that we had, where we supposed to go in the day room. Explaining what the day room is, is where when they come down to your cell, they rack the cells and ask you, day room time. You get a couple of hours in the day room. And they put us, they pack us all up in the day room, all of us. So you can say, yeah, you want to go to the day room or no, you want to stay in your cell. It don't matter. It's up to you. However, when we had our next day room uh, opening, when day room came, I hosted a major meeting, a module meeting. So when I host the meeting, it was me and Peabody. I also took it to Peabody. Before I host the meeting, I took it to Peabody because of Peabody's influence in the miles of Peabody was there, you know what I'm saying, since like 78, fighting his murder cases and shit, his brother Ronnie, you know what I mean? So they've been there. So Peabody was well known in the county jail by a lot of the sheriffs. Me and Peabody knew each other from the streets in the 70s as well as from the juvenile hall system into the system as well as the county jail. So we had a relationship where we established, bro, as, known, as being known as bloods and knowing each other's bloods from the streets to the county jail. So I didn't just meet him in the county jail like a lot of cats did. I had already knew him. And so, uh, like I said, we host a meeting in the day room. And when we host a meeting in the day room, uh, you know, I stepped up and I explained to a lot of the sets, you know, everybody was in there who, you know, a lot of the reputables who represented their sets and niggas who had clout from their set. I explained to all the reputables and explained to the whole entire blood day room, the blood car, right in there on the spot. Check this out, homie. I said, it's a lot of us coming in, bro, from all different sets. A whole lot of us. A lot of us don't know each other from these different sets, blood. Everybody don't know each other. So in order for us to keep this shit at bay where we can keep it on one alliance and we know that we, we all rocking together and we all on one accord, I said, we finna have this shit called Buster Week, man. Every car. Every hood, you run your own buster week. Nobody from another hood gets involved with your hood and your politics when it comes down to buster week. But we're going to run buster weeks around this motherfucker from here on out. And we're running them twice a month. Look at people looking, niggas looking around, looking like, where's some other niggas talking about buster week? So let me break it all down to y'all, homies. Buster week. Buster week mean, bro, from here on out, when we go to courts and the Crips did the same shits. Not for us Buster Week, but for us the green light. So when we go to courts, when we go to visits, I don't give a damn if it's the hospital, and you got to deliberately go to the hospital. Most of us deliberately had to go to the hospital or play like you were sick so that you can get down there to the hospital to put that work in. But once that green light go down twice out of a month, when the rectables, when one of us, when the rectables call that green light, we go in the day room and we have a meeting, and we call that green light. And that green light means from every hood in here, every die move set that's on this module. Ain't nobody exempt. It means the rules stand for every fucking blood hood that's in this module that I just named off. Ain't nobody exempt. These are the rules. So when we go in the day room and we call that green light, that green light means, nigga, everybody who going to court, that means you going to court all over. It's people on the chain gang going to court from far as to Pomona, as far as to Riverside, to Los Angeles, you name it, Santa Monica, Van Nuys. Homies is going to court all over. So it ain't no excuse. Ain't no excuse. So when the, when the green light is pushed, man, niggas got to go put that work in, baby. Yeah, that's when they separate the boys and show the boys and turn the boys into the men and separate them punks to the side of niggas who's really with the shit, nigga. Yeah, huh? Straight up, bust the weed. My real ones out there know what I'm talking about right now. The real G's out there know exactly what I'm talking about. Because you niggas was involved. You was dead. You know what I'm talking about, man. True fact, bro. 
bust the wig. Green light. So again, when the green light is pushed, that means anybody going to court, anybody going on a visit, you subject get your visit fucked off, or you subject mess, get it, get your visit, and on your way back from your visit, you going to the hole. Because you ain't going to make it back to the module. Nobody makes it back to the module when you go put that work in. You're supposed to go to the hole. That's the whole purpose. That's the whole sole purpose of putting that work in so you can go to the hole. So when you go to the hole and return back to the module, we know who all the soldiers who put that work in. It may be 15, 20 niggas missing out the module for about three or four days, five days, because of the work they went and put in. Throughout all the cycles that I just named, whether it's court, going to the roof, going to the hospital, going to the clinic, going on a visit, it don't matter. When that button is pushed and we hide a green light, nigga, that's what that means. That's exactly what that means. It's like at nighttime when a certain time comes and we holler, Usalama! And Usalama is hollering over the tear. But Usalama mean the Swahili, zip it up, quiet time. Nobody talks. You can talk, pure whisper. If you talk to your homie or you talk to your celly, it's a whisper. You keep it at a bay. You keep it at a minimum because people got to go to school, got to go to schools, courts, wake up in the mornings, man, and they wake us up 4, 5 a.m., man. While y'all still out here sleep, they waking us up in that damn county jail 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning to go to courts, you know, packing us like meat packers do that some bitch. So it's a respect mechanism. So cats can go to sleep. Then you got dudes in trial fighting for their life. So it's rules, bro, and standards. So when a nigga holler, Usalama, that's what that means. And I don't give a fuck what set you from, what hood you from, it's not exempt. It was the fucking LA County Jail rules that we all put together, put down as real Damus and the Rectables. So nigga, if I holler Usalama on the tier and a Bonnie Hunter said something, his ass is getting DP when we get to that day room. Straight up. If a Brim hollered out Usalama, and one of my homies or one of my homies and one of his homies talking because they, they partners. Both of them young niggas get DP when we get to that day room, bro. Because it was rules and it was standards, principles, morals. And we stood on that shit, bro. We really stood on that shit. So that's what made us who we were as far as real Damus, bro. It was hard to be a real fucking blood in them 70s and them 80s, nigga. It wasn't easy. Not if you was a real one. Now, if you was one with a real name, a real reputable name, homie, and cats I just named off for how long, man, was real dumb moves, bro, from all over. And like I said, I know them. I know them all, man. I know plenty of them from all over that I done ran with on the streets, in the systems, out the systems. You know what I mean? Commit, committed past his criminal elements with some, all the above. Because I'm a real one, homie. And I come from that culture and I come from that era. But I'm just one that was able to stand up, man, and continue his path and survive and change my life around, bro, to make a difference. So this is why I'm here sharing this fact of Muno with y'all today, man. Sharing this, this clear, uncut fact story today, man, about Buster Week, man. You just been tapped in, struck my lightning bolt, man.